Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Yanitsa Boyajeva, and we're currently at Mobile World Congress 2023 in Barcelona. I'm now happy to be joined by Scott Lewis, VP of Phoenix Tower International, and Patrick Westfog from Comba International. Hi, thank you very much for joining me today. Hi, Yanni. So first off, Patrick, what are the products that you're showcasing here at MWC, and what would you highlight the most? So, Yanni, yeah, well, the main theme of uh, the show for us this year is sustainability and shared infrastructure. So uh, if we take a few examples, uh, we're showcasing our new antenna platform where we take a complete life cycle assessment on uh, sustainability from raw material all the way until the antenna goes end of use, right? Uh, apart from that, we have our new DAS family coming out where you can add 4G and 5G together with up to 12 uh, RF bands in one single unit. And apart from that, we also have our open RAN radios, the new ones, the triple bands, where we support uh, all the rats out there. So we're on par with the incumbents, let's say, both in terms of uh, service parity as well as uh, energy consumption. But maybe if I have to choose one area, uh, I would probably go for our new uh, small cell family, uh, 4G and 5G for private networks. I think that's uh, soon going to be a killer uh, application here in Europe specifically. So. so now, Scott, tell us about Phoenix Tower International and your global expansion. Well, first of all, thank you for hosting us um, and thank you for having me here. Phoenix Tower is almost 10 years old. We're in over 20 countries globally. We're a shared infrastructure company. We're a tower company which means we own and operate infrastructure that multiple networks can, operators can share. Um, my role is to help us invest capital for the next generation of wireless. So Patrick mentioned private networks. We think private networks are very interesting for mobile network operators and for enterprise businesses. We're also very interested in expanding the footprint of wireless with 5G into more buildings. And are you trying to go beyond building and operating towers for MNOs and enter, for example, the private network space? And if so, what kind of solutions and verticals are you thinking of? And what are the challenges there? So big question. Um, I'll, I'll address one thing. We like to be the most important customer servicing tower company in our market. So for example, in the Dominican Republic, we have good market share, we have deep relationships there. And in that country, it's a hospitality destination around the world. So we focus mostly on serving our customers with new towers and with new DAS systems and ho hotels, for example, in a, in a, in a country like uh, Dominican Republic. Every market's quite different. And private networks is something we're studying in, uh, I would say, the US is the first market we'll look at for private networks. We're owned by some Blackstone uh, investment funds. And with that real estate, there may be some opportunities and also a couple of our UK markets like Ireland. We know Compa International as an RF and antenna supplier for MNOs. But can you tell us what solutions might be suitable for partners like PTI? OK, so uh, maybe I'll focus on two of the solutions we have for, for a company such as PTI. Uh, we have been working for many years with, with, with the tower co industry, which is quite different from the M MNOs. And the way we started off with, with the, the tower co uh, segment ha has been traditionally with our DAS solutions. It's, it's uh, closest to what our core is about. So it's shared infrastructure in terms of uh, bringing, well, when we started 2G, 3G, but now it's 4G, 5G, to large venues, metros, uh, stadiums, and, and such, right? So, and, and when we do that, we always go hand in hand with PTI or other tower coasts, because they will eventually own this infrastructure and lease it out to the MNOs. Um, and maybe a second area where we're exploring now, with, with specifically with, with Scott and PTI, is the private network arena, where the MNOs may be involved in some cases, but in many other cases, such, in, such as in Germany and, and France and even in UK, there is spectrum dedicated for the enterprises. So as we are not an enter enterprise provider, we tend to go with someone that can host and, 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 and own the, com uh, the infrastructure and also maintain it over the years. Yeah. So that would be the two areas where we... Two good ones. Yeah. So Scott, what is your opinion and strategy for Network as a Service? And what would be the benefit for MNOs and private enterprises? 
Well, network as a service is a very popular subject at this uh, at this show. It's even more so than last year. Um, I'd say there's in, in two countries we operate in. I'll give you some examples. In the U.S., there's probably a dozen companies that think that network as a service is interesting. Um, we've seen one large global tower company uh, purchase the radio access network of a a, a large telco in, in Western Europe, uh, offering it as a service. It's an interesting idea for us as a tower company. I'd say we'll study it. It's uh, it's a little bit adjacent from our core business, but it's it's where some of our customers would like us to go. So Patrick, what is your perspective on the private network segment and how would these customers be different from your traditional customers? Yeah, so maybe I, I briefly spoke about it in the last question. Well, it's different in many senses. Uh, First of all, perhaps uh, it's 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 a huge market because you have thousands of enterprises out there, right? And and uh, our sales organization is probably not set up to attend them directly. Uh, so you have to go after certain vertical verticals, and in these verticals, find the correct partner to work with SIs or or tower co's, etc. That maybe, as you said, you're in the hospitality industry in uh, in Dominican Republic, uh, maybe the automotive industry in Germany, and so on. Um, and there is a second difference also attending these customers. Are, they aren't really into radio. They don't care about the radio as such. They want to see efficiency for their factory or their end users uh, using their venues, right? And uh, so they want to have a complete solution. They don't want to go into the details of, you know, capacity, etc. They want to see how they can monetize based on what we provide to them. So Yanni, Patrick just made a terrific point. Selling to enterprises is very different than selling to mobile network operator customers. The sales process is different for both the supplier, the original equipment manufacturer, OEM, and for tower companies, our business model has historically not been enterprise business focused. And so that's why it's so important for both companies to connect and partner together to deliver a service. There's still bus around openness in the RAN, but still MNOs are a bit cautious. What is your view on open RAN and what would it take for it to be deployed at larger scale? I think what we've seen over the past few years is that there has been a bunch of large greenfield rollouts, right? So new networks, most of them maybe 5G uh, only. And the, the phase we're entering now, at least in Europe, is a brownfield uh, scenario where we have to replace the incumbents, which is a bit more difficult because we, we have been searching for, or they search for service parity, right? If they have a service today, they cannot, you know, back off that service. They have to keep on that service. And I think over the past 12 months with our new radios, we are now there, there and beyond, uh, both in terms of service parity as well as uh, size of our radios and also the energy consumption. So from a radio pers perspective, at least for 4G, where we are strong, uh, there's nothing missing from the radio perspective. Maybe what we're missing is a little bit how the ecosystem cooperates because Open RAN, as you said, is all about openness. So we are just one of uh, the pieces in the puzzle, right? We do the radio and the software that comes with the radio but someone else is doing the DU uh, baseband uh, and, and the orchestration, etc. And to make it all come together in a cost efficient way, probably we need to iterate a little bit more to get there, but it's getting closer and closer by the day. Yeah. And we have a bunch of interesting POCs going on in Europe and hopefully later this year, also some commercial deployments. And Scott, do you have any recommendations for products and solutions for suppliers like Comba that can help PTI grow its market share? So your questions about how suppliers like Comba can help us drive more market share for both of us. And digital infrastructure companies, tower companies, we specialize in building assets that can be shared. And so to the extent that OpenRAN, Patrick just answered some questions about OpenRAN, can be a commercialized technology in the next five or 10 years, for both in-building DAS applications and for outdoor 5G deployments, we feel like it will give our customers, our mobile network operator customers, a more cost-effective platform to build more infrastructure with us. 
Uh, it's a win-win-win. And so I would say the focus here at Comba on open RAN enabling technologies would be my number one priority. I think that maybe that can become a game changer for companies such as yourself, because you could you would have more freedom, not depending on the incumbents when you do your projects, right? You can do and own more of the whole uh, infrastructure yourself. So that could be exactly. a way to accelerate th this whole um, thing with indoor and, and venues and so on. So. Those are some great insights there. Thank you very much. Thank Patrick you, Yanni. Thank you, Yanni. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a good show.